Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to the Hermitcraft server. It is episode 78 and we're currently over here in the end. Yes, that is right ladies and gentlemen, I have just come back from an enchanting session. In fact, I've actually just come back from the Monday evening live stream where I was doing an enchanting session and I managed to get myself some new gear because as you guys know, I have been walking around without a chest plate for the past couple weeks and it has caused me some problems. I've actually died twice since not having a chest plate and I would say those two events there's definitely a correlation between those two but as you can see I've got myself some new gear I've got myself protection for unbreaking three chest plate and you may be sat there thinking why on earth do you have the golden boots on that's something that I've completely forgotten about but that is because we actually managed to get number one on Twitch we managed to get the most viewed Minecraft live stream on Twitch on the Monday evening live stream and I thought I would celebrate by wearing my golden shoes. Okay, so I thought I'd chuck those on, but obviously right now we aren't number one on Twitch, so I'm gonna take those off and put my insane, just absolutely flat out mental boots back on, because otherwise I'll probably jump off something that I think I can survive from and won't. But anyway, let's head back over to the Mumble Jumble, because I have got a ton of really cool plans for today's episode that should end up being really quite interesting. But before we begin with today's episode, I just want to mention a couple of things. The first thing that I wanna say is that I am currently recording this video on Tuesday. Yes, it is Tuesday. It's around about five days before this video actually goes live. And that is because, as you guys know, I'm fairly certain I mentioned this maybe in the previous episode of Hermitcraft, but I'm going on holiday. I'm going on holiday to Portugal. I'm super excited. I'm leaving on Thursday, which should mean that I get the opportunity to play with the snapshot for one day because the snapshot rolls out on Wednesday and I am so excited for it. Obviously, there's loads of new features being added. That's extremely exciting for someone like me who loves Minecraft, loves making YouTube videos, and it's just going to be awesome. Loads of new content and things, which is fantastic. And I really can't wait, but it is a shame that I am actually going on holiday the next day because it means that I'm not going to get like the fullest experience that I possibly could. But hey-ho, can't complain because holidays are pretty good. The next thing that I just want to mention is the fact that my channel is doing really, really very well at the minute. I just want to say a huge thank you for the amount of support that I've been receiving on my channel recently. By the time this video releases, chances are I'll be nearing, if not past, 800, not 800,000, 700,000 subscribers. I overstated my own subscriber count by 100,000 there. But yeah, we should have passed 700,000 subscribers. And that is just plainly insane. It really has been going crazy lately. And I just want to say a huge thank you for all of the support because... You guys are amazing. You make me so happy. Seeing you all in the streams, seeing you all down in the comments section on Twitter, always chatting to you guys, obviously at Minecon as well. It's been an incredible experience so far. YouTube has been awesome for me, and hopefully it continues to be awesome, because otherwise I'll be really upset. Actually, having said all that, by the time this video releases, chances are we won't have quite hit 700,000 subscribers yet, but we'll be fairly close. At the minute, we're at 684,000 subscribers, and that's on the Tuesday. So, even so, if we are close to 700,000, that's pretty insane growth. It really is going crazy at the minute. I guess it's something to do with summer holidays and all that good stuff, allowing all of the younger people to watch my videos more, and I guess subscribe more often. But all I'll say is that it's brilliant, and it's given me a whole bunch of motivation to make a ton more videos. In fact, speaking of videos, how about we discuss what I'm actually going to be doing today, because we're going to be creating an item matrix system that allows me to transfer items between all of the areas of my base. It's gonna be pretty cool, pretty complicated, so let's hop into my redstone testing world. So, I have spent around about the past hour working on this little thing here, which may sound a little bit ridiculous, but I had a few different ideas of how I wanted it to work and things, and that involved quite a bit of fiddling. I was originally going to use minecarts, but I've concluded that that's just silly, and instead, we are going to be using water streams. So, this is the contraption. That is the input chest right there, and then we have this selector panel that goes on the wall. And all that we have to do is we select the location. So let's say this is going to the satellite base and chuck the items in and then they will be dispensed out in the correct area. That's that's essentially it. So that then would transport the items across in a water stream off into the distance over to the satellite base area and that will sort that one out. As far as getting the items back from that area, if we want them to go back, perhaps transfer items from the satellite to my actual storage system, then all we have to do is we will have to chuck the items in on that side and they will transfer them into the actual storage area themselves and it will automatically sort them out and drop them into the storage system. So that is the plan, that is the idea. Hopefully it all works in practice, but as far as I can tell, this little system here should do most of the hard work. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, the foundations of the build are now all in place. We have got all of the hoppers, we've got some redstone lamps, and we appear to have some lag spikes as well. I don't know what it is. Recently, I've just been having the strangest computer problems, and this isn't a computer problem, this is a hardware problem. My mouse seems to periodically disconnect. Did you see? That was a big one there. That's what I'm talking about, okay? My mouse just sort of stops moving, and I think it might have something to do with the fact that I'm using a wireless mouse, which is something that I never ever do, and I always said I wouldn't do it again after my hellish experience with the Apple Magic Mouse. Finally got another wireless mouse, and it still has the same problem. So it's a bit of a pain in the bum, but anyway, that aside, we're gonna move on from computer problems, because as you can see, I have started work on the redstone build itself. We've got a few bits going on, you know, nothing too exciting at the minute, but I am now going to start adding in the droppers that are going to be facing downwards there. They're going to be dropping down into the water streams. And now we just have to run the hoppers into them. So that's like that, like that, and final one now, like that. So there we go. We have got all the basics done. Now it is time to start wiring this thing up. And I have to say, I'm a little bit worried because as you can see, we don't have too much space right here. You never guess who's run out of iron again. Yep, it's me. I, I've run out of iron pretty much once again. You can see I've got 31 blocks left. That is it. That is everything that I have. I don't understand how I managed to do it. I mean, I know looking around, you're probably thinking, well, it's clearly because you use quite a bit of iron. But it's just crazy how fast I seem to go through this stuff. Absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, that point aside, I think... I have managed to get the selector panel done, and wow, my mouse is just playing up big time now. So this could be a bit of a problem. Might have to whip out my old mouse in a couple seconds. But yeah, let's give it a flick, and that one should have retracted one of the pistons. But it hasn't. Oh, I've placed the redstone torches on the wrong block! Oh, what a spoon! The old mouse is back in action, baby, and it is feeling good. It's feeling... A little bit awkward in the hand, I'm used to my Logitech Performance MX mouse, which is an insanely comfortable mouse, and I've just gone back to an old Logitech mouse, which is nowhere near as comfortable, but it feels accurate, like it feels like I could do some serious first person shooting here, it feels like I could really pinpoint things, which is quite a nice feeling, so I might stick with this for a little while, but anyway, the redstone is now done, I've fixed everything, look, flick this lever, and, oh, are you kidding me, are you actually kidding me? It, it doesn't work, does it? That didn't work. Why did that not work? It should have worked. Did that redstone block retract? Am I going crazy? Was that not working then? There is absolutely nothing there which should stop that from working. So let's give it another go. Okay, here we go. Flick the lever. That's turned off. And... It's still extended. I literally just tried this out. What is going on here? The, it's all turned off. What? That's the strangest kind of bud I've ever seen in my life. There is nothing bud powering that. Well, redstone has just confused me for the first time in a very, very long time. I've never seen that before. Okay, so there is plenty of fandangled redstone going on here. I have been working on this for around about... I'd say about an hour, you know, just because this whole... So, there is some serious fandangled redstone going on right here. We have got a ton of pulse extenders, a bunch of other stuff. For some reason, the design that I had in my redstone testing world doesn't seem to be working so smoothly in this world here. And I don't know why that is, but it's causing a few slightly minor problems, which means that I've had to shake up the redstone a little bit. And hopefully it is now working. I've done multiple tests. That hasn't really helped my situation. Right, let's get back up to the top. And let's give it a go. So, we have got the back dropper selected, and we are going to put 27 bits of cobblestone in. But I've just remembered, I just did a test, and that means that there will be some stuff in this dropper at the end here. So let's make our way back down to the bottom, pick up that stuff, pick up the stuff from the dropper itself, and then let's do this. So we're going to put a certain amount, a certain amount of cobblestone into the chest, and in theory, it should all be dropped out by the dropper. If not then we've got ourselves a bit of a problem. So here goes, 26 bits of cobblestone. That is now going through the system. The redstone clock has activated, and it looks like it's spewing out the cobblestone. Let's see what happens when it stops. Why? Why is that the case? 
I'm so confused because every single time I've done this, despite the fact that I've changed up the pulse extender, I've done everything, every single time there is always six left in the dropper and I just can't quite understand why that would be the case. Oh, I hate myself so much sometimes. I've been trying to work out this problem for around about the past 15 minutes. Just, ah. Uh. Yeah, believe it or not, having your comparators facing in the correct direction in your pulse extender actually fixes the problem. So now that's done, we have got all of the redstone on this end all completed, but we have got to connect up this to the other parts of the base, which means that we have got to do quite a lot of work with compressed ice and quite a lot of work with water streams. But because I've sort of driven myself a little bit crazy for today, I think I'm going to stop recording now and I'll be back tomorrow. So, on the screen right now will be some footage of me building the item transportation system to take the items to and from my branch mine, which I thought would be really easy. You know, my branch mine is just below where we were working. I thought it was going to be nice and simple, no problems there. Turns out, this is actually quite a massive project, okay? I hadn't really clocked in my mind that this was going to be so difficult, but of course we have to have item elevators, we have to take the items way up and then over into the storage area. And yeah, as it happens, this is actually quite a time consuming thing, so I highly doubt I'm going to be able to get every single location done in today's episode, because otherwise I will be here for days, I'll miss my flight, won't end up going to Portugal, and I won't be particularly happy about that one. But anyway, you may be wondering, why am I doing this little time-lapse chat here? Here's the deal, on Tuesday I uploaded a video announcing the fact that I was creating a Patreon server. And the majority of people were extremely happy about this and really excited, but there was a small minority that were a little bit upset about the whole situation. I'll get onto those in a couple seconds, but before I begin I should probably explain that Patreon is essentially like a Kickstarter, but for content creators. So you pledge a certain amount of money each month to your favourite content creators, as a way of saying thanks for all of the content that they produce and all of the time and effort that they put in. Now, there are two main reasons as to why I got a Patreon. Number one is because it was extremely well requested. A lot of people wanted me to get a Patreon. A lot of people said that I should do it. So I thought, you know what? Why not? It sounds like a good idea because number two, it provides a stable income. And that's an important thing because YouTube does not provide a stable income. It fluctuates like crazy. It goes up and down. You never really know how much you're going to be earning in the month. And Patreon seemed like a really sensible idea so that I could get a rough idea of what sort of income I was going to be getting. Now, Patreon, just like Kickstarter, offers a bit of a reward system. So people give a certain amount of money, they receive a certain reward. And my original rewards on Patreon really were a little bit rubbish. $10 a month, I believe, got you a sign on Hermitcraft. I think $25 a month got you a place in a book on Hermitcraft. And I think $50 a month got you a personal video saying thank you. So really, the rewards weren't particularly interesting. And a lot of people requested that I create a Patreon server because that seems to be what everyone does on Patreon. It seems like a really good way to say thanks to your viewers. And I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I decided that I was going to be doing that once all of my exams finished. Now, August has come around. I announced the server on Tuesday. And as I say, 99% of people were extremely happy about it. But 1% were a little bit upset because they saw it as a server that was a pay to play type of deal. They saw it as $10 to get onto the mumbo jumbo server. And I guess if you take a look at it at face value, you are paying $10 and you are getting access to a server. So it is sort of a pay to play, but it's a little bit different. So once again, I'm going to be bringing Kickstarter back into the equation simply because I think these two things relate quite nicely. So say for example, a company wants to create a film and they need crowdfunding for the film. So they set up a Kickstarter and they have all of their rewards set up. And say for example, you pledge $100 to their Kickstarter and you get a poster of that film. Now, if you take a look at it at face value, you pay $100 and you get a poster. That's a rubbish deal, isn't it? That really is a rubbish deal, but you're not paying $100 because you want the poster. You're paying $100 because you want to support the film and make sure that it gets made. The poster is like a little bit of a bonus. It's like a bonus from the whole transaction. And the same thing goes for the Patreon. People pledge $10 because they want to support me as a content creator and the spot on the server is like a bonus from that. Now I'm going to be honest, I was not expecting my Patreon to blow up quite as much as it did when I announced the server. I wasn't expecting that many new patrons, so I just want to say a huge thanks to all of your support, new patrons and old patrons as well. But it's just, that's how these things work. This is meant to be a supportive thing, not a paywall type thing. And I apologize that some of you felt a little bit left out from the whole situation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now that that little Patreon chat is over, I've managed to get all of that out of the way. 
it is now time to test out the new system that I have created. And I tell you, as I mentioned earlier on, this system is a little bit complicated. And I'll see if I can actually show you some of the redstone going on down here. But yeah, here are all the water streams. Here are all the, the bits and pieces going on. And basically... It transports the items from here up into my storage area. That's all you really need to know. That's all you need to know about the whole thing. So now it is time to give it a test. This is the moment of truth. And I have to say, I'm a little bit nervous about this one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck in 32 bits of redstone. Now, what I will mention is the fact that my second account is currently on the server and is looking at the redstone chest. And I am going to monitor... If this redstone comes through, so at the minute we have got five stacks of redstone plus 28. So it should take us up to five stacks of redstone plus 60. I hope. I really do hope. So I'm going to keep my eyes on that chest and I'll let you know. So we appear to have lost. Yeah, we have definitely lost some redstone here. We have lost five bits of redstone, which isn't good. It's really not good, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop onto my second account and we're going to fly about a bit with the no clip on because of course it's in Spectator 3 and see if we can work out where this redstone has actually gone. So let's follow this thing round. Right, it's not round there. It doesn't look like it's down there. Is it down at the back here? No, it isn't. Is it anywhere near the item elevator? Doesn't look like it. So the item elevator goes all the way up through here and then ends up over here. Is it caught in any of these? I'm going to say no. Whereabouts could it actually be? It's not down here. It's not in any of these areas. It's not falling into that block. Has it got caught up in the hoppers? No. There is absolutely no sign of redstone around here. Unless the item elevator on this side isn't working properly. In which case... <gasps> oh my word! This item elevator isn't working. I have been throwing items into this. And the item elevator isn't actually working anymore. What's caused that to happen? Why is that broken? Is it not set up correctly? Oh, wow. Okay, that's a big problem. We're going to have to sort that out right now. Because otherwise, I'm going to lose huge numbers of items. Blimey. Right, so I am just in the process of recreating our little item elevator here, I think. Now, I have no idea what's caused this problem, and it's maybe a little bit concerned about all the other item elevators that I have around the base, but I think what's caused this is the lack of run-up. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of rotating the item elevator itself 90 degrees so that it is now going to go out like this, and then the items are going to flow around here and then come in at speed into the elevator and hopefully go up to the top. If that doesn't work... Then, I don't know, has like Mojang done like a sly patch that's just broken all the item elevators immediately? I suppose it is snapshot day. I highly doubt the server's running snapshot. It's definitely not because I'm playing on Minecraft 1.8. But, I don't know. I don't know what's happened here. This is the first time this has gone wrong. So we've had the bud problem today, which was a little bit odd. And we've also had the item elevator problem. I'm getting a little bit concerned for Minecraft right now. Okay, so let's give the new item elevator a quick test. Let's see if we can do this. So first off, I will fill up this so that it goes to 64 and then I will just quite simply chuck a full stack of redstone into this chest. So that involves going like that and like that. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that this item elevator actually works. But I'm quite upset because if that has been broken this entire time, that means that I have been losing a lot of these items. It would explain why I keep chucking in loads of hoppers and they never go through into this chest. Or I keep chucking in loads of repeaters and pistons and things. And they never end up in these chests. It's because not only do we have 41 items out the back. But also the item elevator isn't working particularly brilliantly. Oh, Minecraft, Minecraft, Minecraft. Okay, I can hear the ticking of a dropper off in the distance. Which means that we should begin to start seeing items flowing in. Right, we've got two bits of redstone. Three. Yep, they are flowing in now. Okay, this is a good sign. We've got a good quantity of redstone coming through. Don't stop at 17. I got a bit worried then. Thought we were only going to get 17 there. But let's take a look. This is tense. This is a little bit tense because if this doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've definitely built the elevator correctly, but it's looking good right now. Are we going to do it? No. No. Where's the last one? Where has the last item gone? 
<laughs> no way. <laughs> no way have we lost one item. Knowing me, I, I, I can guess where it's gone. I've probably forgot to place the block over the dropper. If it's actually in the item elevator though, right, nope, that's not the case. It looks like it must have sort of fallen out here maybe? Although there's no sign of it. Where is it? Where are all my items going? I definitely put a full stack in, didn't I? I'm not going crazy here. I feel like I'm going crazy. I just did three more tests and it was perfect, okay? We didn't lose any items, so I don't know what I did on the first one. Maybe it's just a problem that only occasionally occurs, which is a little bit more worrying, I guess I could say, but it seems to be working now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to test out the new system. So first off, let's set it up so that it dispenses items out of this dropper here, down to the bottom, and what we're gonna do is we're going to try and do a complete system test. So we're going to send 64 bits of redstone down to the bottom. We're then going to pick up those bits of redstone from the bottom and we're going to send them back to the storage area and hopefully we don't lose any redstone in the process. So here comes the moment of truth and... Yes! Okay, so we've got all 64 items in the in chest. That means that all of the items are making their way from up at the top down to the bottom. Now we open up the out chest and chuck the same 64 items in there and just hope for the best, really, hope for the best that they make their way all the way up through that item elevator and then through all the system, through the storage area, then up through another item elevator and back through the storage area. It's quite complicated and I can understand that there are some item lossage potentially maybe, but I'm really hoping that there won't be, okay? So let's take a look. Yes, it did it. We've done it. We've actually managed to transfer the items safely and successfully using the new item transportation system. So it went down to the bottom and then we sent it back to the top. So this one section is working. And I'll be honest, in today's episode, I was expecting to get all of the sections done. I wanted to get everything connected, but I had not realized how huge a project that is. That is a big project. And that is something that I'm going to be working on over the next couple of episodes of Hermitcraft. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode though. It's been a lot of fun. This is a really awesome concept that I want to get working. And perhaps we could even connect it up to Hermit Thrills or something or Hermit Hills. So we could send items to and from there. That would be amazing. But obviously at the minute... We're going to be keeping things simple. We don't want to go too far with this one. So anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.